The following program has been rated PG-13. Shalom Israel. Now, I just wanted to reach out to you because we all know that a lot of you are about to celebrate Christmas tomorrow. And we went over why you should not celebrate Christmas according to the scriptures and other lessons. But I never got down on it. I never really went into detail about it. So I wanted to take that opportunity and go ahead and do that now and still give all of Israel the chance to make up your mind as to whether or not if you're going to make the choice to disrespect the Most High and celebrate this holiday when he told us not to, all right? So, now usually I do not like reading outside of the scriptures, but for this particular case I'm going to because I want to go over the history of what Christmas actually is. And of course, I'm still going to be using the scriptures, but I'm going to an outside source to show you the history that these Edomites know what Christmas actually is. So I'm going to leave the link down from the source material that I'm going to be reading from, and you can go and read it for yourself, all right? I'll, I'll never post anything without giving you the resource for it. Now, let's go ahead and just jump into this. Now, this is coming from the Truth and Light Ministries, all right? This is an Edomite publication, and I'm using this specifically so that you can see for yourself that even they know that we are not to be celebrating Christmas. And when I say we, I'm talking about the Israelites. Why? Because the Most High God gave the laws, statutes, and commandments to us. And he said that we are not to celebrate this pagan wicked holiday. All right. So here's what I'm reading from, like I said, the Truth and Light Ministries. The title, Saturnalia, The Real Roots of Christmas. And here we go. Many Christians today believe that Christmas is a Christian holiday. The fact is that people have been celebrating Christmas long before the birth of Christ. And I want you to remember that. The festivity was known then as Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a festival in which the Romans, Edomites, commemorated the dedication of the temple of the god Saturn. As winter approached, they were losing harvest and were in need of the sun in order for their harvest to grow and bear fruit. Saturn was the Roman god of agriculture and harvest. Now, let's go to, open your Bibles, and I want to go to Psalm chapter 96, verse 5. And we're going to see what's significant about that and how this scripture cannot be played with. It cannot be proven wrong. Psalm 96, 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Now, the scriptures just went ahead and and proved exactly what this is saying here. Because these Romans, these Edomites, their gods are idols. They're talking about Saturn and the gods up in the heavens. Showing you that their God is not ours. Is not the God of Israel, okay? Let's go ahead and continue. This meant that the God Saturn, there it is again, was in need of the sun god in order to complete his job. Therefore, the attention was then shifted to the sun god. You see how clear the Most High makes this in the scriptures? The Saturnalia custom is rooted in pagan and Celtic beliefs and traditions. They believed in human sacrifice including the sacrifice of small children and infants, in which were offered to their gods in order to empower the sun to return with strength. Now, I want to stop right there real fast. Who do you think they were sacrificing? Yes, your ancestors. 
They believe that winter was due to the sun losing its power due to a battle between the sun god and the god of the dead. And you see how it's talking about all these gods, right? Exactly what they said in, excuse me, in, uh, goodness gracious, Psalms 96.5. It's telling you right here. Here we go. Since winter is annually, they believe these battles were fought annually and thus the sacrifices had to be annually in order to appease or empower their respective gods. Because the sun always returned at the beginning of the new year, they believe that it, excuse me, that it was all, goodness, okay, now they have this wrong. I'm not reading this wrong. That it's, was due to all of their human sacrifices and custom rituals that took effect, empowering their sun god to return each year victoriously. Now, let me go ahead and stop. Let's talk about this here for a second. So as you clearly see, this whole time of Saturnalia, they were killing people, murdering your ancestors and this is exactly what you celebrate the murder and the slain and the destruction of your ancestors all right we're not done let's continue i'm going to go ahead and jump down all right here it is as part of the Saturnalia Carnival throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, rabbis of the poor places in Rome were forced to wear clown type of clothing and march through the city streets to the mocking of the crowd, heavily rained by a variety of missiles. When the Jewish community of Rome sent a petition in 1836 to Pope Gregory begging him to stop the annual Saturnalia abuse of the Jewish community, he responded, it is not opportune to make any innovation. On December 25th, 1881, Christian leaders whipped the Polish masses into anti-Semitic frenzies that led to riots across the country. In Warsaw, 12 Jews were brutally murdered. Huge numbers were disabled and disfigured. And many Jewish women were raped. Two million rubles worth of property was destroyed. Some foundation for a holy day they like to call Christian. Israel, that's what you are celebrating. Now, that was an Edomite publication. So now we're going to go back to our book. We're going to go to the scriptures. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Stop. So now the Most High is telling Israel, do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now, what were we just reading here about these Romans and what they were worshiping? They were worshiping the sun. Where's the sun? It's in the heavens. Where's Saturn? It's in the heavens. You see that? For the heathen are dismayed at them. The heathens. Who are the heathens? The heathens are the other nations. You can't mess with this book, baby. You can't. For the customs of the people are vain. Vain means pointless. Their customs are pointless. They are worthless. They mean nothing to us. Nothing. And here the Most High said, for the customs of the people, the other nations. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest and work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They 
must needs be born. Now, let me stop there because that right there, a lot of people get confused when it says they must needs be born. Now, born means like airborne, to move. This right here, this is saying that you have to move the actual tree because they cannot move themselves. Because they cannot go, and it tells you right there. Be not afraid of them. Why would the Most High tell you don't be afraid of a tree? Because he knows what those customs were. They knew, do not follow this custom. The very same one that a lot of you have in your house right now with those damn Christmas trees. For they cannot do evil. Why? Because it's an inanimate object. The tree itself cannot do anything. But it's all about what it represents. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great and thy name is great in might. So do you see that right there what the Most High told you? The Most High said, do not follow their customs. And he was specific with this when he said, do not put up Christmas trees. And there it is. So I want to go back. I want to go back here to what we was reading earlier. All right, now I'm going to start from the beginning with this. Many Christians today believe that Christmas is a Christian holiday. The fact is that people have been celebrating Christmas long before the birth of Christ. That's, remember, I told you to remember that, right? Good. Now, I'm going to go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10 was written 400 years prior to the birth of Christ. Do you see that there, Israel? Even the Edomites know we're not supposed to be doing this. They're telling us in their own publications, look, y'all not supposed to be celebrating that. So why do you? And let me be honest, I used to celebrate it too, but I don't anymore. Ever since I came into this truth. Now, that was a commandment, Israel. When the Most High says, oh, hear me, ye men of Israel. And of course, that's the male-female vernacular. He's telling us we cannot celebrate this holiday. It is evil, it is pagan, and it is of the other nations. We cannot do it. But so many of you have damn near bankrupt yourselves and you can't pay your bills, you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your car notes because you're out there buying gifts under the spell of that nonsense. And the Most High said don't. And don't think for one second that there's not going to be a penalty for you celebrating that holiday. Not just that, but all of them. What we should be celebrating, which I am right now, is Hanukkah. The Feast of Dedication. That is what the Most High gave us to celebrate. He gave us our time to celebrate. And yes, you can still give gifts, but not on their terms, on His. There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with giving your children or somebody a gift. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Now you might say, okay, well, what's the difference between Hanukkah and Christmas? There's a big difference. One is instructed by the Most High and the other one is condemned by the Most High. That's the difference. So he gave you the choice. You're going to follow the Edomites and the other nations or are you going to follow me? There's no gray area there. The Most High has always been about make your choice. And Israel, there you have it. I mean, this isn't really anything much to linger on. I just showed you what it was. I just showed you that even they know that you are not supposed to celebrate that. And why would you want to? The raping of our ancestors. It is the biggest sign of disrespect for us to celebrate this. The murder and human sacrifices of our babies. And I'm telling you, if you continue to celebrate this, this, this evil pagan holiday, you are a damn devil. 
and I'll call you that to your face. Now, for a lot of you, you just came into this truth, all right? So guess what? You know now, though, so there's no excuse. But for those of you that have already known this and you still go celebrate it, you are an absolute devil and traitor to your people. Yes, we, we bring treason against you because we're not supposed to be celebrating this. And now you know. So you can no longer play ignorance. So you have to go ahead and make that decision as to whether or not if you are going to respect the Most High and be obedient or disrespect him and spit in his face. And guess what? The choice is yours. All right? So with that being said, Israel, I really do thank you for taking the time to allow me to break this down to us and our nation, but this is only for the better and the empowerment and the building of our nation, all right? We have instructions to follow, and that's what we have to do, all right? So once again, Israel, thank you guys, and I love you guys to death, and I really mean that. I love y'all, and let's get our nation back on track, all right? So Israel, I love y'all. I'm out.